Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Yes, I'm going to be doing every single one before you ask, even the crappy ones. Even the items that people deem absolutely worthless, although this one's not one of them. Uh, this is the Skewer of Krintiz. I believe that's how you pronounce it anyway. The Skewer of Krintiz is a relatively low-level unique item at level 10, and it's actually surprisingly good for a large number of characters. Um, and it has to do with the fact that, number one, it's extremely fast, and number two, it includes a mechanic known as Ignores Target's Defense. And as we go over this item, I feel like you too will come to realize that Skewer of Krintiz is actually a surprisingly good weapon. Um, so let's go over it together, um, starting from the Saber. So the Saber is an extremely fast base. Um, not only does it have one of the fastest attack speeds in the game, um, it's also a relatively low damage weapon, too, um, at only 7 to 19, even with the bonus damage that is applied. Um, it also has a durability of only 32, which is an issue, and it does break very often, so you will find yourself back in town repairing it on a regular basis. Um, it only has a dexterity requirement of 25 and a strength requirement of 25, which makes it a relatively easy weapon to use for any character, which will come into play as we talk about what characters can utilize this item. At level 10, it's just really good. I mean, when you put it on at level 10, it's an extremely good item, and, uh, and it can be useful for just about any character that throws it on. 50% um, enhanced damage is actually pretty nice, and it is static. Um, it does have an additional bonus damage of 3 to 7, which it does need because of its relatively low base damage. Um, and it also has the Ignores Target's Defense mechanic. Now, Ignores Target's Defense does not work on bosses, um, and there is an issue with this. So when you're fighting bosses, you're going to have to rely on a different weapon, probably with a large amount of attack rating. Uh, but for most monsters in the game, Ignores Target's Defense will allow you to hit them basically free of charge. Um, the main problem with Ignores Target's Defense is that there is also a mechanic that is hidden in the attack rating um, that has to do with the character's level. And it does not tell you when you hold your mouse over your attack rating um, about this mechanic. And it also does not calculate it into the percent chance that it shows you. Um, and this has to do with level difference. So if I were to take this on a level 10 character and try and hit, like, say, a level 85 monster, I don't need attack rating. And that part of the calculation is certainly um, in my favor, but he's level 85 and I'm level 10. The chances of me being able to hit him are relatively low considering the level difference. So there is a level difference penalty, and the level difference penalty still applies to ITD. Um, ITD is a great mechanic, um, and it's absolutely amazing when you have it. But keep in mind that if the monster is too high level above you, there's a very good chance you're probably not going to be able to hit him anyway, even if you have ITD on. Uh, we also have 7% mana steal, which is definitely very nice to have, but due to the rather low physical damage of this weapon, you may find the mana steal not really living up to its expectation. Uh, we also have plus 10 strength and plus 10 dex, which are, which are both very welcome. Uh, 10 strength is 10 additional off-weapon ED, as well as the ability to put on other equipment, and dexterity is, of course, more attack rating um, and block chance, both of which can be very, very useful. We also have the Ethereal version, which is 9 to 25 damage, um, and uh, has 10 less on the requirements of only 15 15, <laughs> which is kind of insane. I think most characters in the game can manage 15 15, even if you're just trying to get the extra 10 strength and 10 dex, um, can definitely be very interesting. Now, um, Skewer of Krintiz actually comes in handy for a lot of different builds. So, when you think about this sword, what you need to think about is the fact that at level 10, you're going to be able to hit most targets with relative ease. Um, you are going to be able to steal some of your mana back. You get some nice stats, and you can attack very fast. So what does this line up with? It lines up with an Enchant Sorceress. It lines up with a Holy Fire, Holy Freeze, and Holy Shock Paladin. It lines up with a Fire Claws Druid. It lines up with an Elemental Damage character, basically, of any kind. If you are a character who dishes out large amounts of Elemental Damage, this is a really good sword for you because it allows you to make sure that, number one, your hits are actually landing. And number two, you're attacking fast enough to apply that elemental damage in a way that makes it useful. So we have here a sword that is specifically designed around Holy X 
or whole, like basically elemental damage characters. Um, it can also be upgraded to get a little bit more damage out of it. So let's go ahead and play around with this, shall we? So we have a sword that is 7 to 19 damage, 25 dex, 25 strength, level 10, which upgrades very nicely into a Shamshir of 18 to 43 physical damage, which definitely fixes a lot of the physical damage issues, um, with a only a dex requirement of 58, strength requirement of 58, and a level of 28. Not bad at all, and could certainly be useful well into um, the end of normal difficulty and the beginning of Nightmare. Um, you may have to uh, get rid of it probably... Actually, you know what? You, you wouldn't. If you're if you're a holy X character, your damage that you're relying on is specifically your holy damage or your enchant damage on a sorceress. So you don't really are not too worried about the physical damage, but the physical damage will give you some mana restoration, which will definitely be helpful. So you could probably use this well into nightmare difficulty, uh, utilizing that ITD effect. The ethereal version can also be upgraded uh, utilizing a Ral, a Soul, and a Perfect Emerald. And this will go from 9 to 25 one-handed, 15 dex, 15 strength, level 10, to 25 to 61, 48 dex, 48 strength, level 28. So not bad. Not a bad little upgrade there for either one of these. Of course, the ethereal version is probably going to be pretty hard to utilize without like a Zod rune or something. Um, you could put it on a... Um, Act 3 Mage, just to get him some extra strength and dex to put on something. Or you could put it on an Act 5 Frenzy Barbarian. Um, he could maybe get good use out of it around level 30. Of course, you can upgrade this a third time to its Elite tier, uh, which is going to require a Pull Rune, a Lum Rune, and a Perfect Emerald. And that's going to bring this from the Skewer of Krintiz Shamshir, 18 to 43, 58 dex, 58 strength, level 28. To the Skewer of Krintiz Elegant Blade, 52 to 74, which isn't really that great. 122 dex, 109 strength. That's really high requirements for a uh, level 59 item. Uh, you might have a little bit of trouble actually putting that on. And the Ethereal version is also upgradable from 25 to 61, 48 dex, 48 strength, level 28. To 76 to 107, 112 dex, 99 strength, level 59. As you can see, physical damage is not this weapon's strong suit. The weapon's strong suit lies in the fact that it can dish out the damage relatively well for an elemental damage character. Um, you want to utilize this specifically on those characters that don't really care so much about physical damage as they do connecting their hits and applying their elemental damage. Um, you could also potentially use this with a uh, Rabies Druid, uh, I imagine could, could be useful because you're going to guarantee your hits, uh, run in, bite, run out, run in, bite, run out. This would give you a very easy time applying your Rabies to multiple targets and then moving on. Um, I'm trying to think if any other characters could get good use out of this. Uh, barbarians that generally require high physical damage. I can't think of anything that they could get good use out of this with. Amazons don't have any elemental damage attacks they could use with swords. And um, necromancers can't really get good use out of it either. So it's pretty restricted to Fireclaw Druids, um, Holy X Paladins, Enchant Sorceresses, and uh, maybe even Rabies Druids. Um, those are your main classes that are going to get good use out of this particular weapon. Um, let's take a look over at Silo's Pen real quick, and let's have a look and see where we could potentially find ourselves a Skewer of Krintiz if we wanted to get our hands on one, and um, you know what l places kind of like on level we could go to really find it. And since it's a relatively low level item, I'm going to assume uh, a relatively low amount of magic find as well, so keep that in mind. We're going to be looking at about 50% magic find. Um, let's take a look at bosses first, and let's see what potential boss we could farm for this item. So I'm going to be honest with you, at level 10, I'm seeing nothing. Like, there is a whole lot of nothing on this list that I would actually be able to farm at level 10. I mean, granted... Duriel is like a level, I don't want, I want to say like level 18, 19 monster um, like that, that you would fight him at. Um, not really something that you would want to go and farm for this particular item. Probably pretty bad. Uh, let's check a look at Super Uniques, see if there's a better option as far as Super Uniques are concerned. Uh, we got Normal Cow King. 
Um, not really a good choice for a level 10 monster, obviously. There we go. That's a good choice. Bone Ash in the Cathedral at 1 in 778. That's actually a really good choice. Um, at level 10, you could farm him relatively easily, get some EXP in the process, and probably get yourself a Skewer, skewer of Krintis. That's actually a really good choice. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else here in Normal Difficulty uh, Act 1. But I'm not really seeing a lot of good choices. It does seem like Bone Ash in the Cathedral is really your best bet for this particular item. Let's take a really quick look and see, though, if we had like a 400% Magic Find character. We just wanted to get our hands on this item. We didn't really care where we farmed it. Um, it does look like normal Mephisto at 1 in 214 and normal Diablo at 1 in 233. And uh, for super uniques, we are looking at normal Cow King at 1 in 390. With normal Bone Ash being pretty close behind at 1 in 434. And I'm going to be honest with you, normal Bone Ash is faster. So even as a high level character with high amount of magic find, Bone Ash in normal difficulty is still the superior choice. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys skewering things in my name. And as always, keep skewering. <laughs>